I recently did a poll on my YouTube channel asking you guys what you would rather see. I know a few of you have asked for a video where I kind of show my favorite tools and supplies, ones that I reach for on a daily basis, pretty much for every project I use, or a craft room tour. And a majority of you chose the um, my must-haves or my go-to tools and supplies. Um, there were quite a few that wanted a craft room tour too, so if that is something that you're interested in, I can still do that too. Um, but for this one, we're going to kind of go over the things that I reach for on a daily basis. Other than my normal, obviously I'm a Copic girl, so that's going to be my number one, my favorite thing ever. Um, but I'm not going to show you all my Copic markers. These are basically tools other than mediums. So the first tool that I use constantly is my Teflon bone folder. I know that you can take uh, reams of cardstock and everything to like Staples or Office Max or Office Depot and have them cut and score it for you. I don't do that. I usually, when I get a ream of heavyweight cardstock, I sit down in front of my TV and I cut all my cardstock, I score it, and obviously I use my bone folder and I usually, you know, cut about 400 card bases, 500 card bases, um, each time I get a ream. So I do that all myself. I don't have to do it often, but so I don't necessarily use this every day, but I do use it often. Next is my Tombow Mono Sand Eraser. You can see it's well loved. I make a lot of mistakes. I wear a lot of nail polish. I get inky fingers, as you can see I have now. Um, so sometimes you get smudges on your cardstock, especially if it's a white panel and it's not so easy to cover up. This is a great thing to have. It's not a regular eraser. It's rougher, I guess. The texture is, is more like sandpaper, hence the name sand eraser. Um, but it will take off most smudges. Um, you just want to make sure that you don't use it, you don't press too hard or else you're going to just tear your cardstock. But just going over lightly a few different times will pretty much take off any smudge. And I do, I, I use this all the time. Next is something a little similar to that, and that is my adhesive eraser. So I use a lot of liquid glue. Sometimes if you put a little bit too much or if you have an intricate, intricate die cut, some of your glue kind of squishes out. Once it's dry, you can take it up with this eraser. It's kind of like a rubbery, weird feeling thing, but it works. Um, you can not only use it for your cards, but you know how sometimes we get new dies in and it has the sticky part on the back from where it came off the packaging. This will take that off too. This is a great tool to have. Next is my <laughs> very dirty. This is the chamois that I use to clean off my stamps. This, I know Lawn Fawn has one, um, Gina K has one. There's uh, quite a few companies out there that are coming up with stamp chamois. I don't have them. I did have a Lawn Fawn one um, that got really disgusting and I eventually had to throw it away. But before they came out with them, I was using chamois anyway um and i use sorry about that i'm dropping things i use these that i got from amazon and i just cut them down because it's a huge piece and i can usually get eight of them out of this and it's as far as i know about the same material as the regular stamp chamois that you get from these companies but i ended up once i found something that i loved i ordered like three of these which will last me pretty much forever because as you can see I wait till they are pretty dirty to actually throw them away and get a new one. Um, but they work great as long as they're moist. This one's moist. Um, but once it dries up, it'll be, it gets all hard and you can't use it. Just run it under water, squeeze it out, and it'll last you pretty much hours until until you need to, to dampen it again. But this is what I use. Like I said, the stamp chamois are pretty much the same material just as good quality um they don't necessarily show all the nasty stuff <laughs> so if you don't want something nasty like this in your craft room you may want to go with something like that 
So next is my anti-static tool that I use for heat embossing. And I keep mine in this little container here because as you can see, it gets all that powdery stuff all over. So I just keep this right on my desk. Um, that way I never lose it and I don't get all this powdery residue over everything else that I have in here, um, which my desk tends to get pretty cluttery sometimes. So I try to remember to keep it in this, but I use this every time or I try to remember to use this every time I heat emboss. And for heat embossing, the heat tool that I use is the the Wagner heat tool. And I know um, I actually got mine a long time ago, and I think I got it at like Lowe's or Home Depot. Um, but you can certainly purchase it from most of the, the retailers, the craft retailers, Simon Says, Scrapbook.com. Most of them sell these, or you can purchase it on Amazon. Just keep in mind that it'll probably be in a different department on Amazon, it'll probably be in like the home improvement section. But I find that this one heats up really well, um, really fast. Um, so you get minimal warping on your paper because of the heat that this thing puts out. Um, and it has the little stamp there because it does remain hot for quite some time. So you wanna be careful, but this is a great tool to have. Next for my trimmers i i have a 12 by 12 trimmer um that i used mainly for cutting my card bases and things like that um but the two that i reach for the most are my two tonic trimmers and i know they're different colors now uh, mine are pretty old so obviously they do stay sharp for a lot long time um this is the one that i go to probably the most um just because it will fit the a2 size card on here um, and it stays super sharp. It's got your grid lines. You can align your cardstock from the top or the bottom. Um, it's got little dashed lines. I don't know whether you can see it for the five and a half mark and the four and a quarter mark. So it's it's great. I cut all my card, or not just my card bases, but my card panels ahead of time. So this is the one I use. I can usually cut two or three pieces of the Nina Solar White 80 pound with this with no problem. If I'm cutting something smaller, like a sentiment strip, where I need to get maybe a little bit more detail, I'll go to this smaller one, which will not fit your card panel on here. It only goes to, the lines only go to three and a half inches. Um, but it is great um, to, to cut those little smaller areas, and this one aligns from the top. Now, I do a lot of fussy cutting because I mainly create one layer cards, so I create a lot of masks. My favorite scissors are these, and these are inky as well, along with everything else in my craft room. Um, these are by Fiskars, and I, just, I don't know. I just really like them. They stayed sharp a long time. I can get into um, intricate areas for my masks. They lock up so that when you put them away, um, they don't take up too much space with the handles, and you can just unlock them, and they're on a spring. I really, really like these, and you don't have to worry about you're cutting out a lot because I do cut out a lot. You don't have to worry about those little, your fingers going through them and, you know, getting sore or whatever. You kind of just maneuver this a little bit different. And I really do like these scissors. Next is something super inexpensive is my T-square ruler. I, like I said, do a lot of one layer cards, mainly scenes. And as I've mentioned before, I am not in any way artistic at all. So mainly my scenes consist of straight lines. So my T-square ruler is used often. And I think you can get these for like 2 or $3 at Walmart. Um, they're really, really inexpensive, but a go good tool to have in your craft room. Next is my white gel pen. And I have a few of these different brands. This is the Jelly Roll. There's um, several different brands out there. You just want to make sure that you're getting something opaque. This is great for adding detail as far as highlights and polka dots and stripes to your colored images, but it's also great for fixing mistakes. So I go out of the lines a lot. I'm a very messy colorist, so sometimes I need to fix up certain areas that maybe I was using a dark color for and I can't necessarily use my colorless blender. I use my white gel pen for that a lot. Next, I use my Ranger Clear Stamp Cleaner, and I don't use this very often. I mainly can get away with using my stamp chamois, but there's certain inks that just don't come off with just the chamois, especially if you let them sit. 
my Versa Fine Onyx Black Ink, which is one of my go-to inks, for, especially for sentiments. If you don't clean that off right away, you're going to have a hard time cleaning it. So I find that if I just put some of this on there um, and then go over it with my chamois, I have no problem getting that ink off. Now, as far as inks go, my go-to inks are obviously my Versafine, like I said, for my sentiments. This is a pigment ink, so it doesn't necessarily dry all that quick, but dries quicker than most pigment inks, but it will give you a really nice crisp image every time, and you can also heat emboss with it. So if you want a black heat embossed image or sentiment, um, you'll just use the Versafine and clear embossing powder over it, and rather than trying to use the black embossing powder, which I never have great luck with, so this is the next best thing to it. For my coloring, I like to use the Ink on 3, um, the Blackout Ink by Ink on 3 is my favorite ink to use for Copic coloring, and it's waterproof as well, so if you wanted to do water coloring with it, it's great for that as well. I get a crisp image with this every single time. It's a hybrid ink, so it's not a pigment, it's not a dye. Um, and I just get a great impression with it every time. It's great for masking, it doesn't smudge. And like I said, I'm, I'm definitely a Copic girl, so this is, has been, definitely become my go-to ink for that. Also by Ink on 3, I like the Fade Out ink. This is for no-line coloring, no-line water coloring. This is great for pencils, anything that you can think of. It's like nothing I've ever used before. It kind of just melts into whatever medium that you're using and has great results every single time. You will not see the lines, but it's crisp enough and dark enough where you can see the lines to see what you're doing. But after your coloring is done, you'll never know that it's there. It's, it's a great, great ink. Obviously, we all have the Versamark for heat embossing and for watermark ink inking. Um, sometimes I'll do some resist with just the Versa mark and not necessarily emboss. Um, so I think everybody has this in their craft room, but <laughs> this is my go-to embossing ink. And for a white pigment ink, my favorite is the Hero Arts Unicorn Pigment Ink. And this gives a, for being a white pigment ink, sometimes we might not necessarily get a good impression. I think this one works really great. Again, you want to clean your stamp right away with any kind of pigment ink, but this is definitely my favorite white. For my colored inks, I'm not going to show you all of them because I have quite a few, um, but my go-tos are either Hero Arts or Simon Says Stamp. There's a ton of them out there, and they're pretty much all comparable. They're all great quality. But once I started my collection, I felt like I had to kind of finish my collection with um, one or two brands. Of course, I have the Distress and I have the Distress Oxides as well. Um, with, with the Oxides, you can definitely do some stamping with that as well. For my adhesives, I don't use a ton of adhesives. Um, I, I have a ton of adhesives. But definitely my favorite is the Tombow Mono Multi Glue because it's so, you can use it for anything. You can use it for regular cardstock. It works great for watercolor cardstock. Sometimes that gets a little warped or it doesn't like to stick to the card base that well. This works great for it. It works on fun foam. It works on pretty much anything. Also, it's repositionable when dry. So you can use this for any kind of masking. Um, just rub it with your finger, let it dry, and now you have a mask. So. Um, this is definitely my go-to, and it's inexpensive, and the little amount that you use, this little bottle will last forever. And of course, I have my Scotch foam tape. Um, I buy these on Amazon. I don't get the huge, huge roll, um, just because it's huge, and I, I have limited space. So I usually get, it's bigger than this, it's about this big when I get it. Um, and I don't use a whole ton of it, um, because like I said, I do mostly one layer cards. These are mainly for sentiments and um, when I do die cut something, but um, this is definitely my favorite foam tape to use um, and fun foam if I'm doing a whole panel, which you can certainly get at Walmart or on Amazon for pretty, pretty inexpensive. And finally, I'll move on to masking because that is what I do the most of. And I have different types of masks that I'll use depending on the project that I'm doing. So these are the different masking 
mediums or items that I use. My go-to for stamped images is the Simon Says Stamp Masking Paper. It is tacky enough where it will not come up when you're doing kind of any kind of ink blending in the background, unless it's like one of those little teeny tiny areas, you might have a problem, but you'll have that problem with no matter what kind of masking paper you use. Um, but it doesn't tear your paper either. So it's tacky enough to stick in one place, but um, not tacky enough where it's gonna tear your paper when you rip it up. This is definitely my go-to for any kind of stamped images. And it's fairly inexpensive. You get quite a few, I think you get 25 in the pack. Um, and I always keep this on hand. I'm devastated if I run out of this. I will also use the Eclipse masking paper, um, and this I won't necessarily use for stamped images if I'm doing any kind of ink blending. If I'm just stamping one thing on top of another, I don't mind using this, um, but it's just not tacky enough to use for any kind of ink blending, especially for intricate areas, but it is just kind of easy to, <clears throat> excuse me, to take this off the roll and take as much as, as you want off of it. But I definitely use this for kind of landscaping. If I want snowy hills or anything like that, I'll, I'll use my Eclipse. Also, I have the full stick post-it notes and these are sticky on the entire back. The whole thing is sticky. And I'll use this again, not necessarily for ink blending. And this isn't, it isn't really because they come up, but they're a lot thicker than the masking paper. So you'll have to, if you do use this for any kind of ink blending in the background, you want to cut on the inside of the black line just because these are thicker. So um, you don't necessarily get as great as re of results for the ink blending. Um, but I'll use these if I have to cut multiples of each image because I can kind of take a stack of them. I'll stamp it once, take three or four of them, cut them all out at once, just saving time and being lazy at the same time. But I work, I work with these for that reason. I also use the post-it note tape, and this is kind of just to mask off different sections of my cardstock, not necessarily any kind of images, um, but if I wanna mask off the top or bottom, I'll use a strip of this. Also, I'll use this a lot to hold my die cuts in place when running that through my die cut machine. Speaking of die cut machines, I can't show you mine. I use the full-size Gemini. I've had mine for probably about two years. I first saw it on HSN and figured that would make my life so much easier. And my mom surprised me with it one day and I've had mine for about two years, way before it became popular. And it still works great. I have replaced my cutting mat once in the two years and so far no problems. But it is off camera because it is such a large machine and it's plugged in over there, so I won't show you that, but that's the die cutting machine that I use. For my last masking medium here is liquid frisket, and I'll use this more if I'm doing watercoloring and I need to mask something off. Um, it's liquid, you want to just apply this with a paintbrush. Um, it doesn't take too long to dry, but you want to kind of make sure that you use the same paint brushes for this every time because they will get really gooky. And even if you rinse them off immediately, it's still gonna get gooky. So you wanna reserve one or two um, paint brushes just specifically for this reason. I'll also use this if I if I have a really teeny tiny image that I just can't cut a mask for, or I just don't want to. I'll just add a little bit of this. You can use this on regular cardstock as well. So those are my go-to things that I have in the craft room, like I said, other than mediums, there's the Copics, there's the Arteza real brush pens, so there's the Distress inks, the Distress oxides, there's my glitter pens, there's things like that that I use. If you want me to get in more detail, I certainly can. Um, these are things that if you watch any of my other videos, you're going to see on a consistent basis anyway. Um, but if you do have any questions, leave a comment below. Um, if you want to see me explain anything else that I may have used in one of my videos, let me know. And if you do want me to do that craft room tour, also let me know that as well. I can definitely do that in the near future while my craft room is organized at the moment because I don't know how long that'll last. But thank you guys so much for stopping by. Have a great day. Bye.